Okay, we're having an interesting weather through my window here. So I'm getting sun and then it goes away and then I can't see and the lighting is gonna be weird in this lecture, but you know what? That's just, I'm not gonna complain about sunshine coming through the redwoods. Okay, let's talk about epistasis. The good news is epistasis, our example, is gonna rely on blood typing, which we just talked about. So epistasis is a phenomenon that happens when one gene overrides the expression of another gene. And this, I bet you can think of examples like albino critters. I want to say, maybe I shouldn't give um, examples. I bet you can think of analogies in your world where one thing, the expression of one thing is dependent on the expression of something else. In our example with blood types, we drew the red blood cell. And then I don't know if you noticed, but I drew a little dot. And then I embedded the... Um, I can say it, the antigen into the red blood cell at the dot. Well, it just so happens that the dot is a protein that literally holds the antigen in the cell membrane. And that protein, I'm just going to write this down for you, it holds the antigen in the cell membrane. And it's called the H protein. And maybe I will just highlight it for you so that you can see there. Those are the H proteins, okay. What happens? Like, just go with me here. Take a wild, take a wild guess. What do you think happens if you don't make a functional H protein? So what if you have a genotype that leads to funky H protein? Well, well, let me tell you. You're going to have, okay, let's make the funky H. I don't know how to draw a funky H. Oops, I can't make it that color. I have to make it green. Those are funky H's. And if you are looking at that and you're like, dude, how am I going to plant an antigen in there? I make the antigen. The body has the genes like this. This person, do you agree, has type A blood, and let's just say they have a IAIA genotype. So they have the genes to make type A blood. But if they have the genotype that causes funky H, then they have no way to embed those antigens in the red blood cell. I like to think of them, those antigens now are just floating out there, like they can't attach. What's my phenotype now? I would have expected that my phenotype is type A. And definitely based on that genotype, I would expect type A blood. Same genotype, IAIA, but funky H, and now we have, what's, what's my phenotype? Phenotype is what you look like. What's my phenotype? Type O. They have the genes to code for type A blood, but they're missing a different gene that's necessary. The H gene is epistatic to the I gene. We should write that down too. H gene is epistatic 
to the I gene. The presence of H is necessary for the expression of I. So you're going to get a weird phenotype that doesn't match the expected genotype when you have epistatic interactions between genes. Do you think this happens? Yes, it happens all the time. And this is why I learned very early on, biology instructors often like to do like weird problems that are like, okay, the baby's in the hospital and it got mixed up and who's its mom? Look at the, look at the blood types and then you can tell. Well, you might be able to tell, but if you, like, there's complications. <laughs> and you might think, like, my parents are both A, B. Why am I O? Well, it could be the H allele is missing. The H gene is not expressed. And therefore, you, do, you did get the proper, you got the I's, A's, and IB's from your parental units but they also had funky H's that they passed along to you that you are expressing, so now you express type O blood. Okay, how do you feel about that? Can you see how we're getting a little more complicated? It's getting a little more complicated in here. Next up, polygenic traits and pleiotropy. Dun, 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 dun.